The city of Temple is now accepting applications for their Good Neighbor program. It's where volunteers help mow the lawns of those folks who are a bit older or even those who are homebound. Best of all, it's all free. 25 News reporter Drell Baker has more. Most of us can handle cutting the grass and doing little home projects on our own whenever we get a little free time. But it's not so simple when you're elderly or disabled. We can do certain things, but then everything gets heavier and, and it takes us longer to do things. Then when you start adding chronic conditions, um, you know, your heart problems, your, your asthma, that really debilitates seniors. Temple resident Rosa Hernandez says most seniors and disabled residents live on a fixed income and paying for lawn service or a handyman can be expensive. You just can't afford it, so you're picking and choosing. It's just like sometimes they have to pick and choose which medications they're going to buy because the expense of the medications have gone up also. Volunteers would do yard work, painting, and other home improvements while using equipment provided by the city's tool library at no charge to senior or disabled residents. It's an opportunity for them to help those who sometimes can't always help themselves, uh, especially within their home where they spend you know, most of their time. City officials say the Good Neighbor program started up a few years ago, but participation took a hit during the pandemic but now they're hoping to pick the volunteer service back up. When somebody, you know, just even picks up and does the yard for you, you know, the gift that you're giving is you're saving them 40 to 60 to $80 that week. You know, that's grocery money. The gift of this program is phenomenal. Forms are already being accepted and go through the end of October. All volunteers and those wanting service must fill out the Good Neighbor program forms and consent to a background check. Volunteers start working April 1st. In Temple, Jarrell Baker, 25 News. Right now, Texas ranks 48th in the country for elderly populations. Seniors age 65 and older only make up 13.2% of the total population, or about 3.7 million people. That's according to the most recent census. It is expected to grow to 8.3 million by 2050. Clean police responded to a single vehicle motorcycle crash earlier this morning. It happened at North Twin Creek Drive and East Grand Sierra Avenue at about 2. The man involved was taken to the hospital but later died. Clean police are still investigating tonight. Also new tonight, a former Fort Hood colonel has been relieved of command due to, quote, loss of confidence. That happened this past Tuesday, according to a statement from Fort Hood. Colonel Ann Meredith was relieved of command. She's been on the job only since July. According to a report from Stars and Stripes, she will not face criminal charges or a court-martial. Her husband, Colonel John Meredith, was relieved last October. The report says Army in investigations into both were separate. September 30th is now officially Vanessa Guillen Day in the state of Texas. Lawmakers passing that measure earlier today in Austin. Guillen is the Fort Hood soldier who was killed in 2020 by another soldier after being sexually harassed on post. September 30th was her birthday. Her sister Myra was at the Capitol today testifying in support of that House bill. You know, as we've seen uh, one too many cases now and one just recently, which would be um, Anna's, it's a shame that you know, it, it's still happening today, even with the current laws in place and everything that we've worked so hard for. So it's 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 raising awareness and it, admitting the fact that there's an issue in that uh, Vanessa deserves to be honored and um, remembered. Myra was instrumental in getting the I Am Vanessa Guillen Act passed nationally, which led to big changes in the military concerning sexual harassment reporting. A Texas House committee on Thursday gave final approval to a proposed two-year, $300 billion spending plan. It includes property tax cuts, broader security initi initiatives or border security initiatives, and the first pay raise for state employees and teachers in more than a decade. The plan also provides for mental health service expansion, but it leaves out requests for pay raises for retired state employees and funding for rent relief and child care programs. Also, two bills in the House would make sports betting legal. They would also allow casino gambling. Supporters say this would protect consumers or bring in a lot of money to the state, but opponents say gambling makes money off the average person. And another bill in the Texas House is drawing criticism from sexual assault survivors. It would change the statute of limitations for institutions accused of child sex abuse. The time limit would drop from 30 years to just 15. It would also require increased burden of proof. Three other bills would totally eliminate 
the statute of limitations. Also at the Capitol, Texas senators weighing in on a bill that would ban dressing in drag. Effectively, that's what it does. Michael Atkinson has the story. Across the country, Republican-led legislatures are working on policies that would restrict drag performances or appearances. Texas is no different. As senators, all of us uh, can agree that children shouldn't be exposed to sexually explicit material. Uh, this material can take various forms in print and visual media as well as live performances. SB 12, filed by Republican Brian Hughes and backed by Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, would ban drag appearances on public property and perhaps more sweepingly in front of any minors. And it does that by including the legal definition of sexually oriented performance to include, quote, a male performer exhibiting as a female or a female performer exhibiting as a male who uses clothing, makeup, or other similar physical markers and who sings, lip syncs, dances, or otherwise performs before an audience. Doing that could have sweeping repercussions. It's gonna limit the businesses that can hold drag. Sexually oriented businesses, including clubs or bars, face greater legal scrutiny. We care about keeping kids safe, too. We do not want kids at the gay bar at 11 p.m. on a Saturday night. You know, that is not what any of us are seeking to do. We're just trying to keep these spaces that are intentionally modified to have children around us to, to still be available. Bridget Bandit, an Austin-based drag performer, came to the Capitol on Thursday alongside several other advocates testifying against SB 12. But they brought with them concerns of pushback from conservative advocates. In fact, recent reporting from the Texas Tribune found anti-LGBTQ demonstrations rose sharply in Texas over the last year. And TikTok CEO on Capitol Hill in D.C. today defending the social media app. Congress is thinking of perhaps a ban, but there are still a lot of questions. We'll have the latest after the break. TikTok facing a major threat as its CEO is grilled on, in Congress and questioned about the video app's security and its ownership by that Chinese company. Mike Valerio tonight has details. There are more than 150 million Americans who love our platform. TikTok CEO facing U.S. lawmakers for the first time on Capitol Hill in a heated hearing. We do not trust TikTok will ever embrace American values. TikTok has repeatedly chosen the path for more control more surveillance and more manipulation. Your platform should be banned. U.S. lawmakers repeating calls for the ban of the video app based on national security concerns about the app's ability to collect data from its users. But TikTok CEO maintains the app doesn't collect any more data than other social media companies. We will firewall protected U.S. data from unwanted foreign access. CEO Sho Chu fighting back, to attempting here. to reassure Congress his company has taken action to resolve fears the Chinese government could gain access to TikTok user data. The bottom line is this. American data stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel. But in the eyes of some experts, an all-out TikTok ban is unlikely. This app has millions of users. Uh, right, so, so free speech and all of these other considerations come into play. Um, and that's why I think we're, we're far less likely to get a full ban and more likely to see some kind of potentially middle ground restriction. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio. All right, pretty calm Thursday night out there, but might see some storms start tomorrow. Yeah, in the morning when you tune in with Josh, we may have a few showers and thunderstorms rolling across the area. I can't rule out an isolated severe storm, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a major event for us. Most of the real heavy stuff has been north of us up into Oklahoma and going into parts of northwest Texas here between Lubbock and Wichita Falls. Just off the cap rock there, that will continue to make its way off toward the northeast. Right here in central Texas, well, the cap is winning out so far, and our main storm system is lifting off into Oklahoma, so as that gets farther away, that just reduces the amount of energy we will have here for thunderstorm development. Our Clark roofing cam in Colleen. Well, it's 73 degrees, partly cloudy skies and winds are out of the south southeast at about 16 miles per hour. As we check out our severe weather risk for tonight, again, it's the western areas that we'll keep an eye on. And this will be about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and beyond. As we get toward Gulfway and San Saba, I do think this is where our higher potential of a slight chance of severe weather will be with a little hail and wind. So don't be surprised with that. Then as these storms make their way toward Highway 281 and then farther to the east, I do think they will start to slowly 
decrease in intensity and that is good news we could use a little rain though and hopefully we'll get a little bit out there but the heaviest of which will likely be to our west you can see by about three o'clock in the morning showers and thunderstorms near Gulfway and San Saba pushing to the east but notice it really starts to back off here as we head into the morning hours on Friday. This is by about lunchtime or so as we get from along and east of I-35. I do think we will be seeing a lot of this push east of I-35 and over into the eastern part of our area. And then after lunch, how about this? It clears out all across central Texas. We will get some late day sunshine and temperatures will get up into the lower 80s for us around here. As far as rain amounts are concerned, maybe a half inch to an inch out in the western areas where our line of thunderstorms will be a little more consolidated. Then it kind of breaks up and we get meager amounts as we head farther to the east. As we get through the I-35 corridor and to the east, maybe less than a quarter of an inch for most of us at best with maybe a couple heavier downpours here and there. So tonight temperatures will be down into the upper 50s and low 60s west, mid to upper 60s central, upper 60s, low 70s off toward the east. Then tomorrow highs getting into the lower 80s. We will get a west wind in here at 10 to 20 miles per hour, and that west wind will help to warm things up on into the afternoon hours. But again, by then, the severe weather threats way east of us. So a couple morning thunderstorms on Friday, clearing out in the afternoon, 81 degrees for a high. 79 on Saturday, 78 Sunday. Your weekend, no problems there. Lows at night will be into the upper 40s. Then, I'm not saying we won't see any sunshine here, but I think there'll be more clouds and sun Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with a few showers here and there. It won't rain all day every day with highs close to 70. And then we get some thunderstorm chances possibly again as we head toward next Thursday. All right, Matt, Belt and ISD is getting bigger and bigger. The district breaking ground today on Hubbard Branch Elementary. Here's the deal. The school is funded through last year's $173 million bond. It'll offer new spaces and technology that'll help facilitate in an improved learning process continue to grow we want to have facilities that are flexible in space for student learning we want to ensure that we design spaces in there for the arts and the sciences so that kids from day one when they walk through our doors in Belton ISD they have experiences that enrich their lives that new school will house up to 800 students and is scheduled to open for the 2024 school year Coppers Cove Spring Festival happened Saturday at City Park. Organizers are adding breweries and wineries to the list this year. There's even a kid zone and a petting zoo. Food trucks and local vendors will be there as well. The first cavalry band at Memphis Key will perform. All that fun kicks off at 2 o'clock. The deadline for filing your taxes is just a few weeks away and time is running out. The Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program could help you prepare if you make 60 grand or less. Much of the work is being done by student volunteers from local universities like Texas A&M University, Central Texas. Knowing that it's here and it's free, uh, you just have to fight with the others to get an appointment, but I think um, it benefits everybody, especially the community here who doesn't seem, sometimes doesn't have the money to pay for tax preparation. Appointments are filling up fast, as you just heard, so make sure to do yours as soon as possible. If you own a Hyundai or Kia, you may want to park close to a tree or building, or you might not want to. A big vehicle recall now underway over a fire risk. Details coming up. New data shows housing prices are declining for the first time in about a decade. Tonight, Shelly Malashi has some advice for first-time home buyers. Good news for first-time home buyers. House prices just ended a 10-year streak, marking the first monthly year-over-year -year price drop since 2012. A lot of home buyers or prospective home buyers all across the country are really going to welcome this good news. According to a new report from the National Association of Realtors, the median price of a U.S. home in February was $363,000. That's down. 0.2% from the same month last year. Experts say the decline may be small, but it marks a turning point for the industry. That's a welcome sign that perhaps all of the peak in the pricing, it's starting to bottom out a little bit. The report coming in spring, the peak buying season, when buyers who have been sidelined by demand